Most of the time, when you are working with periodic boundary condition, at least the way that I try to show it, you always will apply displacement on your model. But that's not always the case. You may also have to apply forces, you may apply temperature, you may apply velocity. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can impose forces in order to simulate periodically boundary condition deforming model. Let's sit back and relax as we get started with this video. So the reason I'm making this video is because a CM video insider asked me exactly this question. So this particular student is doing a study using abacus and he's working with composite materials and he wanted to do some kind of viscoelasticity model. And within the viscoelasticity model, he's interested in investigating creep. And creep will require you to apply a load instead of a displacement. If it's a stress relaxation experiment, then you need a displacement. But for a creep experiment, you then need to apply a force or a load and so that necessitated him to investigate the effect of using forces in imposing a load and so he asked me this question and i responded to him and i want to share the same wisdom that i share with this student with you so basically what we have here is an abacus model which represents a composite and the composite is voided so what you see here are voids and the parts that are in green are the fibers and then the other region are the metrics so i've already created inside of abacus and i've also meshed it and everything looks fine. So the material properties has already been created. So I've got an e-glass fiber as the properties of the, you know, the elastic properties of the e-glass. And then for polypropylene here, we also have an elastoplastic behavior for, for this with strain softening. So something like that. So this is fine. And then we created the sections to assign them and all that is done. So if I go to the assembly module, I've also created the assembly and where I match the two components into a single piece. So we need to create a loading step. So, so I'm going to use a static general analysis for most of it and just accept all the default. Within the RV of the 2D, I've also created a set. And this set is a set of the corner nodes. So you create a set where all the corner nodes are tied up into a single set which is called here so then i need to then track what is happening with that set in my history so i'm going to call it my corner node history output so corner node history output and what i'm going to be tracking is basically that set of corner nodes and i'm only interested in rf1 and rf2 which are the reaction forces in the x and y direction and the coordinate positions in x and coordinate position in y so this is what you're going to use in extracting stress and strain data later on but initially with this model you're going to extract the coordinate positions and the reaction forces so then we'll get to our boundary condition so i want to do a tensile x tensile simulation so basically i'm going to have the s back ruler and it's going to be an initial boundary condition with a displacement focus so we'll just select that point and this other point i'll take that and then basically constrain it in the one direction so we're holding it in the one direction we'll do the same thing so this will be y base ruler so and then again i select that point press down shift select the second point and then this will be in the two directions so basically we've constrained the model in the way it should be so that we have a, a, a quarter of a quadrant displacement now this is where our concentrated force comes in so this particular student is interested in investigating creep which requires you to apply a force load instead of a displacement load so what do we do so i'll go into the loading section and then i'm going to use a concentrated load instead because i only have this corner nodes as guides of where i can actually apply my loading so it will only be forces that can be applied over on nodes that i will use so a concentrated force will work so we select this concentrated force here and then it asks where i want to put it so i want to put it there and now this is where you have to make a calculation to find what forces will be equivalent to the displacement that you're you, you interested in the strain that you have so I'll, I'll probably let's do 3e e to power 9 so 3 mega newton really huge forces in, in in play okay so the model is properly set it's been meshed and everything is fine now clearly the next step is to apply periodic boundary condition to this domain but this is sort of where you need a tool to do this and i already have this tool which is called pvc gen 2d which would help you to do this so it's a matlab model so if you find the link of how you can get this code in the description section of this video so, so this is the environment where the code lives in my computer so i'll just copy and essentially all that you need is just this file so this is a file that you're going to run to impose periodic boundary condition but i'll need to copy the link where that is and then i'll go back to my abacus and make that location my working directory so i set it as a working directory 
So I'll paste that so that Abacus will now run on that environment. And then I can create a job. So I could call, call it PBC forces. And then once we have that, then we can go ahead and write input file. So this now takes this particular model that doesn't have a periodic boundary condition, makes it available for MATLAB to be able to then work on it. So I'll now go back to MATLAB. So you could see now the force, that particular input file has appeared here and we've got our executable there. So all I need to do is to call up that executable PBC gen 2 d I'll type it, then it wants me to tell it. Okay, so I'm going to select the file that we're interested in, open. Now it runs through, first figure here contains all the corner nodes, every internal nodes and all the nodes that make up the model. Clearly the one that we are interested in is the boundary nodes because these are the nodes that we're going to use subsequently in investigating uh, applying periodic boundary condition on the domain. So everything looks okay and there's a little bit of information here of what it has actually done. Now, if we look, go back into the folder, you can see it's created a subfolder here. If we open it, the graphs that we looked at will appear there. But more importantly, we've got this updated um, file that contains the periodic boundary condition in, that we used. So you can open it and have a look at it, you know, to see how the periodic boundary condition has been, has been done. So we're not going to worry about that. So we go back to Abacus and now import this new model. So you import that particular model. So I'll put the location and change this to IMP. So this is the model that we want. So if we bring it back into the system, now you can see it's created an, a new model. So if we then go back and look at it, okay, fine. It has still our forces. But more importantly, there are these constraint equations that are here, which is basically what imposes the periodic boundary condition. Again, if you're interested in learning how the theory of periodic boundary condition, then look at the card here with video that I've made talking about exactly how the theory of the periodic boundary condition works. So the final thing we just need to do is to create a new job based on this updated file. So we could call it PBC sim updated. Okay, so this is basically updated one. And once we have that, then we can submit it to run. Remember in this case, we have a, updated the original input file with a periodic boundary condition aware. So our new domain here is called a PBC aware domain. And we're also having forces in, in, involved rather than displacement. And the same thing will apply if you're working with temperatures or velocities or whatever. So you could always use the nodal points to enforce what you're trying to do. Okay, so at the end, it's coming up with some results. So if you look at the results we have, clearly it shows you the expected simulation. So we can go ahead and try and exaggerate what result we are finding here. So if I exaggerate it, it does show you the periodic boundary condition deformation. So you get the behavior at the back, the behavior at the top, periodicity all the way around. And everything is very fine and we are happy with this. So this is essentially how you can go ahead and do this. But of course, the question is, which one is better? Do you, is it better to work with displacement or is it better to work with forces? And, and this is basically one of the challenges with working with this. I will always recommend that you work with displacement because it's a Dirichlet style boundary condition. It's very stable. It's very consistent. If you look at the simulation that we've got here, actually, it couldn't complete the simulation. So if we monitor what has happened, so you find out later on during the simulation, and later on just around 90 percent of the simulation it aborted and it wasn't you know it, it became unstable a bit but if i just go back to the same model just suppress this force that we applied and then just create a displacement so let's call it displacement load and so apply it right on this model here now okay say the length of this region is 100. So let's play a 20% strain on the model. So we've got this system. So I could try this. I'll just call it PBC. So that's sim a similar simulation like the other one, just that this time around we're working with displacement. And then I could also submit the job and then watch what is happening. Remember the system is PBC aware. The only thing we are changing is we're swapping the forces with the displacement. And let's see whether we're actually able to get a job to complete. So with this case, you do see quite a nice stable deformation. The job ran to the completion without aborting, unlike the case we had with forces. 
And so these are the considerations that you have to make when you're working with the periodic boundary condition aware model, whether to actually work with forces or to work with displacement. I would recommend displacement. However, in the unique scenario situation where you're investigating the sort of problem that the student that asked this question was interested in, which is where you are interested in forces, then this is definitely the way to go. And if you've not subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe and recommend the video and share it with others so that when contents like this are made, you will also be there one of the first to see. If you want to see how my code actually works, then this is a video that can help you. But if you also just want to gen learn generally around the principle of periodic boundary condition that I'm using here, then this is another video that can help you. Thank you for your interest in this video and I'll catch you in the next. Bye-bye.